Hi, this episode on the how-to playlist will be how to wire a 220 volt receptacle in your garage. Could be the same for your house, this just happens to be the garage. Here's some of the things we're going to need. Basically we're going to need something to strip down the wire with. And then, uh, I got the wire cutters but likely won't use them because I'm going to be using a little bit too heavy of a gauge for this. Got to have a nice flathead screwdriver, and since it is have your gauge, the tin snips will be my likely choice. Need to have your plug. There's the rest of the plug. Inside the plug comes a little bag of goodies, and this bag of goodies basically it's just the hardware that's required. Once you have it all wired up, you're going to need a multimeter or a voltage tester basically just to test your circuit and make sure you've got it correct. So the one thing we're going to do is when you align these receptacles you have the option of coming in from the bottom or in this case the top as it's going to be sitting like this or you can also do the punch outs on the back side if it's coming out through the wall. So I'm just going to use the one inch punch out. It's real simple. This one comes with the slot, put the screwdriver in, and you just basically are going to pry on it until it comes loose. Just like that. Now I'm going to be right back. I'm going to definitely make sure that since this is already wired up in my junction box I'm going to make sure that it's a dead circuit. Just to make sure that this is a dead circuit even though I know it is because I have it off in the junction box what you can do is you can basically just go from the either the black to the green or the red to the green and if this were a live circuit those would be giving you your 110 or 120 volts. Right now I'm showing zero. Now between the black and the red, if it were live, should be giving you about the 220 to 240 depending on what service you have. And so everything's dead. That's good. So I'm going to take the cutter and I'm going to make the first cut. We're going to see basically inside this wire we've got little pieces of uh, cardboard surrounding the other insulated wires. And I'm basically going to make my incision over top of that cardboard so that I know I'm not messing up the insulation on the wire. And one thing to be careful on this wire is it's actually like twisted. So you have to do like a helix path if you were going to try and stay over the cardboard. Trim away all the extra cardboard. Now while I'm doing this, just to want to make note that the cable that I used has four wires in it. And the reason why it's got four wires is because some 220 volt appliances, they like to split a leg and use 110 volts instead of the full 220. So a regular 220 appliance, like what I'm going to wire this for, a welder, is going to use just these three, uh, basically these three wires. You've got your ground and two hot conductors. 
So then if you were to use an appliance like a electric oven or range, it's going to say, it's gonna use the 220 for the heating elements, but it's also gonna use a little bit. It's gonna take like these two, and this would be your neutral and 110 volt circuit. And it's gonna make this just to like power the digital display or the LCD display on the oven. So when you put these on, these circuits on, you really want as little to mess around with as you can get. So I'm just gonna kind of pre-determine some lengths on here and cut them off. Falling objects, wear safety shoes. So again, I just for the thought process that down the road if I wanted to use this cable for something that required four wires, I ran it with four wires because I didn't want to have to re-run these wires. And currently for this one, I only need the three wires. So I'm going to start off with going really short on the fourth wire. And at the very minimal, you should tape this fourth wire off. I'm gonna put another wing nut on it, just that way I know it'll be in the box, it'll have the wing nut, it's not gonna cause any problems. It'll be just like floating right there, no problem. So before I put them, stuff them all in the box, I'm just going to take these cutters again and I mean use common sense don't don't cut too much here no more than you need really and I'd say maximum five-eighths of an inch but I guess if you really wanted to be subconscious over it most of the boxes that these plugs come in have a wire stripping guide for the a length of what you should strip it. It doesn't really matter. I'm sure that there's a code on it, but as far as which conductor goes on which side, they're both supplying the same power. It does not matter. What does matter is that you get the conductors on the side in the ground in the middle because that's the way it's connected in the panel. Most of these switches, or the, I'm sorry, the plug, they've got these nice it can be a pain sometimes to get them in there, but they are pretty nice as far as how they go in and then how this set screw with the flathead, how it goes in and basically hits the wire down. It, it's a pretty good system, I think. Another good reason why you don't want an excessively long wire being stripped is so that if, if you have this wire, if it's stripped so far back and it has a remote chance that they can arc back to the ground right here, that would be a bad thing.
One, one important note to make is that the cable, the insulated sheathing needs to have been, needs to be inside. So these two screws basically they put the, you know, the cable holder, it's kind of, it's called a relief. And it's called the relief basically because if there's any tension in the cable from being pulled or something, it, it takes all the relief from any tension here and so it's not pulling any of the cable out of the terminals. So you don't have to do, you don't have to be like extra squished on it just so that it's, you know it's not going anywhere. But you definitely don't want to put a shit down so much that it damages the cables or the, the wires inside. So the final step, simply put the cover on. Tell you that the first good sign is always when you can turn the breaker on and it doesn't automatically trip out on you. Alright, so you take your individual leads. Since this is 220, again, anything from here to here should show uh, about 120 volts. If you can get this into the plug far enough to get onto the terminal. So there's 122 there. So then go to the other side. You got the same 122. So where you get your 220, or in this case, this is going to be 240, where you get that is across the two. And there, 244, 245. So that is a correctly wired uh, 220, 240 volt receptacle that's going to So there you have it. We got our, our plug wired in and it'll give us the correct amount of line voltage that we need for uh, 220 to 240 volt equipment. Um, again, definitely make sure you have a multimeter around or a voltmeter that you can test this out with. Uh, you just don't want any accidents whatsoever. But hope that uh, you found this video informational on how to wire a 220 to 240 volt receptacle. This one's 50 amp, 50 amp, they're uh, 6-50 NEMA rating. So uh, if you like this, sub subscribe, hit the like button. If you want, leave a comment. Let me know about some other type of video you might want to be interested in seeing and I'll see if I can get that put together for you. Thank you.